Hello, everyone. Today, I would like to discuss for uh, uh, further evaluation an extremely important postulate regarding the use of the Caprini score or other scores uh, in uh, calculating the risk of a thrombosis for a person. And uh, this is very infrequently done, unfortunately, but it's so very important. The score is, any score should be treated as a dynamic instrument throughout the hospitalization. It should be revised during the hospital stay, reflecting reoperation, infection, central lines. For example, if cancer is diagnosed through, throughout the stay, and then at, the, at discharge, uh, the score will, uh, should be recalculated to decide who might need post-operative post-discharge prophylaxis. We know the hospital coders pour through the medical records for every code in order to get maximum reimbursement for the patient. Well, why not pour through the record for risk assessment, which could save the patient's life? It's a dynamic instrument. And I'd like to present a 47-year-old male with abdominal pain, tenderness, anorexia, and an elevated white count. This is a real situation, but of course the identity is hidden. The patient had a CT scan revealing acute appendicitis without rupture, and he undergoes successful laparoscopic appendectomy lasting 70 minutes. The Caprini score was four, one point for age and, inf and infection, and two points for surgery over 45 minutes. Any embolism surgical hose were used during and following the operation, and the patient was hospitalized overnight for pain control. The next morning, the patient developed severe abdominal pain with a temperature of 102.7, white count of, of, of 30,000, and a repeat CT revealed a pelvic fluid collection. Percutaneous drainage of 450 cc's of purulent drainage was aspirated and a catheter left in place. It's another point. Antibiotics were started, administered to a PIC catheter due to poor venous access. Two more points. The patient remained at bed rest due to severe abdominal pain from the peritonitis. Another point. So the day two Caprini score is doubled. It's now not four, it's eight. The following day, the patient developed a wound infection with partial dehiscence down to the fascia that was treated with debridement and packing. That's an additional point. He combined the, the, the combination of continued abdominal pain, the open wound prevented any degree of ambulation. So now it's another point for lack of ambulation more than three days. A routine chest x-ray revealed a right lower lobe pneumonia resulting in a change of antibiotics. Day three score is now at least 10. The following day, over the following next 48 hours, the patient gradually improved. Sadly, when the patient was getting out of bed on post-operative day five, after the pain was better and the patient was feeling better, he suffered a cardiac arrest and could not be resuscitated. Autopsy re revealed extensive pulmonary emboli throughout both lungs, including a saddle embolus in the main pulmonary artery. Now, that finding alone connotes that all the clots didn't occur at one time. The smaller clots occurred and went out to the perif more peripheral parts of the lung, and then finally a big clot came and blocked the major pulmonary circulation. If you do histology on these clots, I'm sure that would verify it. We'll discuss that. Deep vein thrombosis was seen in the right leg and histologic examination of the lung and leg clots re revealed that some of the uh, thrombi were at least three to four days old. Why does microscopic examination of the clot reflect clot age? Well, when, the body doesn't work in individual systems. The body works as a whole. And when clotting is triggered, the inflammatory system is triggered. And fibroblasts can connect after three or four days, fibroblasts develop and they uh, tend to attach the clot to the vein wall in order to prevent the clot from going to the lungs. And so that process usually takes three or four days so that you know that if you see some fibroblastic proliferation and attachment to the vein wall, you know that clot's been present for more than, than two or three days. And by the same token, uh, if uh, the uh, if there's nothing there, you can tell more that the clot is fresh. So it's important to know the histology of the clot because sometimes, and in this case, that would indicate that this clotting was occurring 
uh, prior to the, the the final event and during that hospitalization when the patient had the other problems develop. Now, the clinical team was shocked since this patient had a Caprini risk score of four, and they suggested that the score was flawed. When the case was reviewed by the department of chairman, the department chairman, she concluded that the fault was failure to update the score as clinical events during hospitalization occurred. So she sort of admonished the team for not using the score in a dynamic fashion. Furthermore, we know that data indicating death rate from PE in patients given either on fractionated or low molecular weight heparin is a tenth of a percent. And she presented that data in a, in a study of more than 23,000 patients. And here is the study. This was a study uh, of 23,078 uh, surgical patients that received either heparin or low molecular weight heparin. 21% were orthopedic, 79% were not. They were given <clears throat> at least seven days of either low molecular weight heparin or unfractionated heparin. And what happened was the incidence of fatalities Autopsy adjudicated was a tenth of a percent. The other thing that was interesting about these series, did, did, were there patients that bled? Yes. Did anybody bleed to death? No. Were there patients that got blood clots, lungs or legs? Yes. But nobody died except for a tenth of a percent. And the administration of at least seven days of anticoagulation in patients uh, with low molecular weight heparin or unfractionated heparin can eliminate most postoperative deaths. So in conclusion, the Caprini score set point for high and highest risk varies according to the population studied. The score is a dynamic instrument and it must be updated during hospitalization and at discharge. Extended prophylaxis following discharge is important for patients with high risk scores. Failure to track obstetrical complications or family history of thrombosis may result in a serious VTE event or fatal outcome. And remember, <clears throat> excuse me, when you meet somebody, interrogate them so they're no longer a stranger. And by doing a thorough history and physical, they become like your friend. And of course, once you know what their risks are, you'd never hurt them. So you'd never treat a stranger. You'd never kill a friend. And now I'd like to uh, ask you to take a look at my website, which has a lot of further information on it, including many videos and all the Caprini articles and abstracts. You can take your own risk score and... Uh, more importantly, I am so proud to be part of this great V-Win Foundation, headed by Sergio Gianzini, Oscar Bottini, and Willie Chi. And they have a beautiful app out now, which covers not only the score, but a lot of other elements which are important. And they have done much to spread the good news and not fake news around the world, especially to underdeveloped countries and areas not usually served. And it's, I'm very proud to be a part of their efforts. Thank you very much. Have a great day.